Hey, hey, how's it going? Am I hearing clearly now? One, two, three, one, two, three. How's it going? Can you hear me? Uh, sort of, yeah. No, I'm just playing. I can hear you. Can hear you both loud and clear. Oh, good. I'm so glad. It's, it's a try. Lot. Um, what's up, what's up? I went and spent $100 on a new microphone, so this audio should be pretty good. Yeah, that's a pretty fancy microphone for that much. <laughs> well, it's a Razer microphone, and like everything else that I have is Razer. So I already had the software installed, and I didn't want to buy a separate company and then having to install that kind of software and then have 15 different softwares for different computer uh, accessories. Yeah. So I just stuck with Razer. Hey, Robert. Works up. It sure does now, doesn't it? Now that I have a microphone, I'm thinking about starting up a podcast. If y'all, why are you got it so close to your mic? Why you gotta hold it like this? Because, man, I am a professional. I don't know. If I, I don't know. I'm still not. learning the uh, how how well this picks up audio. So you guys are kind of like my test here. <laughs> right about where you got it now is good. Oh, thank you, brother. <laughs> and. Do you play with that uh, little styrofoam you got, or the uh, the? I don't I don't know. What, Are you what talking about my windscreen? Mind? Yeah, your windscreen. Well, like, do is my like, windscreen? It just comes on. Well, like, well, I was just talking about like you know, uh, like is it something that you just like? Do you like the feeling of it? No. no it just, it just, I'll just be weird. I'll just be weird. I'm sorry. It's so I don't have to have. Uh, Oh, gosh, what is he doing? It helps that you don't like to hear pops and stuff. That's what the windscreen's for when you're talking. Got you. Well, That's I just, I know. felt one before, and it's, I, I kind of like the feeling of it. So, so I don't have this. Oh, gotcha. Gotcha, gotcha. Because pop filters are annoying. Yeah, this. I don't think this one came with one. I can go over there and look, but I'm not sure. All right, got this gaming headset on. Uh, be careful with your uh, ears. <laughs> Brian's in here. Yes, sir, I'm here. I think I've seen uh, Tina Haley. Yeah, Haley Smith. I've seen a couple of Haley's. Yeah, there's a couple of them in here. In here. Uh, yeah, there's three. Oh, my God. I know two. Two. Just like, Just I don't two. know what you're counting. Joshua Main. Joshua in here. Here, let me go ahead and screw this into the stand. There. What about Sean Crane? You see Sean? Uh, not just yet. Um, Jared, I hope I got the right horse shell, yeah. Let's see, what about Jared? Jared Britton in here? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm here. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm here. I have it. Okay. All right. Yep, I see. Looks like Case is still in his little cubby. His little uh, timeout corner. Yep. Oh, that's pretty cool, though. It's like a cool timeout corner. <laughs> <laughs> hey, let's all start a podcast. Wouldn't that be cool? Does everybody? <laughs> it wouldn't be at all. Yeah. The SNT podcast. <laughs> okay, well, I guess give everybody a little bit longer to log in. It was Zoom's been a little bit overloaded because all the K through 12s opening up, all the colleges are opening up doing Zoom. Canvas had a little bit of an issue earlier today. Everything's been breaking. We've had a stress test today for sure on everything. Yeah, I pulled by my dad's work after coming home, and he said that Zoom had, like, completely shut down at, like, 8 o'clock, and he was asking how my 8 o'clock Zoom call went, and I was like, it went fine. Everything was fine with it, like, no problem. Who? Did you have Miss Daido? You were my 8 o'clock conversation. Oh, okay. You were my 8 o'clock class. Okay. I she can't... was my 10 o'clock one. <laughs> That's right, yeah. 10 o'clock is, you weren't in security at 10. Well, I was the one that figured out how to get it up and, and open and then ran over and told Sam that it went out on the email line and had some people come by and go, oh, you figured out how to 
How, you fixed Zoom. I'm like, I didn't fix it. I just figured how to work around to get mine going. You know how to mess or to fix the video? Because my camera keeps like shutting off for some reason on it. And I have to hit uh, start video up again. Hmm. I don't know. Uh, try updating Zoom itself. Yeah, we're at Zoom 5.2 is the client version. And that needs to be checked. We're, we're in security class. And that is definitely something to, to always keep. You know, we're, we're learning security and, and Zoom is a big, big influx of users. And so hackers are really wanting to try to find ways to to use that tool to break into everybody's machines. So it needs to be kept up to date. They're, they're putting out patches every... What version are you on? The 5.2.1? I think so, 5.2.1. I believe it unupdated last week to that. Let me see. On the Zoom screen help about Zoom 5.2.1. Yeah, that's what I got, 5.2.1. Okay. Okay, well, I don't see any, do a little play a chime if anybody comes in. And screen share. Okay, should be able to the chase get booted. Looks like it. Uh, he he's come. He went back. He came back. Yeah. It, yeah, he's back in there. Yeah, I'll try to fix it. Okay, so everybody see my screen share. Yeah, most definitely. I'm going to go for an introduction to security. It's one o'clock class. Yep, yep. I'm going to go into week one. I'm going to try to keep the color codes up like I did the last part of, of our, our COVID in the spring. I think it's easier if we can watch the colored block on what week we're in. So this is just basically a welcome week. We're going to cover, cover attendance. So I can't mark you here until that you complete the syllabus quiz. I'm gonna circle it right here. And you can all click on that. It's one question. You read a little paragraph that says, I think it's the same paragraph you've seen in other previous semesters. But just you're gonna acknowledge your participation and and content and stuff that you read in the books, you know, might not might be pertaining to the class, but not the values of the university, something like that. And you're not going to try to sue us for, they mostly had trouble in fine arts and stuff where there'd be a nude picture and people were like, I couldn't finish the class and I failed it because there's a nude picture in the book and that goes against my religion or something like that. So there's basically a statement in there to the students can't try to not complete the class for some reason and then complain about it. So take that syllabus quiz. And I will go over our syllabus. Most of you have seen already once today, but here's the syllabus. I do need to edit this a little bit. I've made a change. Probably gonna be here to 3 p.m. every single day, so. Okay, so my office hours are still the same location, but they don't want students in people's offices and stuff. They want you to social distance and call your instructor during office hours or email your instructor. We can set up a Zoom session if need be. Um, so Monday, Wednesday, Friday from before this class, noon to one, I'll be up here eating and sit in my office and 12.30 to three on Tuesday, Thursday, if you need any help with anything. And, Sometimes I might be available after 4 p.m. Monday through Friday, or so we'll have to set that up um, beforehand. But you got my phone number, my email address, 
we got our university COVID statement. It basically says we're living in uncertain times. We've got our current current schedule all set up, and we're supposed to be meeting face to face or Zoom or online. But at any point in time, things may change. We may have to revert to complete online or remote. So right now we've we're trying our best. Um, we use test out. We use the security pro in test out. There's your discount code for purchasing it. And it drops the price to $129 for the test out for security. It also includes the final for this class. It's called the security pro cert exam at the end. And because we're going to be doing Zoom and stuff, and because you have test out, well, you need speakers. If you're hearing me, probably means you got speakers. And a lot of you have talked to me, so that probably means you have a microphone. And I've seen a lot of webcams. Webcams is semi-optional for this class, but you probably really need to try to get a webcam somewhere. We uh, we got the little. Logitech C270 HD. I found one at Walmart back in June and bought it for personal use. And they also bought that same brand for instructors. So that was, I guess, an okay webcam. It's doing a pretty good job. I have used the Xbox, uh, I believe, Connect or Xbox webcam before. It was the same thing as a webcam and plug that into the computer and did stuff that way in, in years past. Uh, so four gig flash drive, eh, it's always good to have flash drive or cloud storage that you can throw documents up into. We got, you have your OneDrive and your Office 365, you can run through your browser so you can actually save everything to OneDrive and, and be pretty decent. So Security Plus, is a certification, industry certification, that we're going to study all of the all of the domain of knowledge that could be asked on that exam. And there's also another exam from a different um, third party, ISC squared, and it's like an S SCP or something like that exam that goes very very similar with the Security Plus exam. So that test out will cover both exams. Most people go with the Security Plus, and if they go to the ISC squared, they're taking much more advanced security certifications versus their, their basics. So everybody just goes with Security Plus, and then when they need more advanced for military or banking or something like that, then they go with the, the advanced ones ISC squared uh, puts out. The test out is going to cover everything. I normally have a pretty high pass rate, at least for the students that do all of the labs and score well on practice exams. I've been averaging over 90% pass rate on that. Um, and actually, I, students that actually complete all of the labs in the, the practice exams based on my um, metrics in the uh, system here in Canvas, they've all made a, a passing grade on it. So don't, don't fail it. Study hard. Everybody loves security too. Um, COVID. So are you going to teach us that uh, the password one, two, three is not the right kind of password for security? Yep. So let's start up this PowerPoint thing. Let's do a slide and okay, everybody see the PowerPoint? Yes, sir. Some of y'all have seen this, especially if you've got some other classes. I shared it with other other faculty. So I'll come up with this here. So a combination of policies is put in place or designed to reduce, not eliminate the risk of COVID-19 infection. 
So we understand policies are designed to reduce, slow the possible spread of the virus. So it's not 100% protection. I'll see all these people and cousins and friends that are arguing about, you know, well, this mask doesn't do anything. Oh, the mask is supposed to protect you, so why should I wear one? And that's, they're, they're not listening to the doctors correctly. And, and yes, we do know that there's not 100% foolproof protection, but we need to follow the policies, wear the mask when you come to come into class. And that's to help keep your spit from getting on somebody else. And the water droplets are what most of the virus is contained in. Yeah, the virus is so small it can go right through a mask, but if it's contained in your in your your spit and stuff, the mask will stop it. Like I said, not 100%, but that along with the six foot distance and wiping down the your keyboard, mouse, and chair when you leave, all of that combined really really helps stop the spread of it. And I'll wave ever so often to turn the light back on because the sensor can't see me sitting still. Um, so I did have an aunt pass away of COVID-19. And I have a an old coworker there. They're doing IT management out of Little Rock and Fort Smith. They've had issues out of Fort Smith. One of their workers have already had two family members pass and another one has COVID-19. It seems like it's a little bit worse in the northwestern corner of the state people around here are like oh it doesn't hurt anybody so there's a few people that's had some some people sick but i don't know that it's too bad in the bb area but we're going to follow all of these standards so here's the standards when you come to class either if you're coming on wednesday or come on friday some of you come wednesday to the classroom, some come Friday to the classroom. Uh, so when you're within six feet of anybody on campus, you need to wear a face mask. Additionally, if you're inside the classroom, you're required to wear face coverings during the entire time, regardless if you're six feet apart or not. And if you forget to bring one, I got a box, a box of face masks, so don't make that an excuse for not showing up because you forgot a face mask we can let you have one notes the break rooms are closed the water has been shut off to the water fountain so they're not going to work and they've also said no food in the classroom and some of you are here for two classes in a row like from eight to, to noon so you can bring in water bottles or any type of sealable container, like Yeti or bubble cup, stuff like that, that you can, you can seal it. You know, if you turn it upside down, it's not gonna leak out unless you're unscrewing it and taking the drink. And they prefer that you wait to take drinks until you step outside and take your, your bottle. You wouldn't wanna keep your, your water in your car. It would be boiling if you went out there and tried to drink it. So you can bring it in, but I prefer you take drinks when you take breaks in the class. And they don't want to see groups of students inside the building, you know, that are closer than six feet apart. They don't want people taking photos and go, hey, look how bad ASUBB students are. They're crowding the hallways and ignoring all the policies. They might be forced to shut down and go all online and not have the ability to come in and remote PC is just not as fun as if you can come in and get extra speed in the classroom. Contact your instructors during office hours. Uh, do that via phone or email or Zoom. Like I said, I'm not going to be sitting down Zoom. You'll need to call me and I can jump into Zoom if, if we need to do something beyond verbal. I need to see your screen. Uh, face shields and face masks are required if an instructor is supposed to help you and they have to be closer than six feet. So I've got cool they on. I can see your screen from my seat right here. We shouldn't have to have face shields and stuff and, and do anything like that. Um, and any special accommodations, maybe after Zoom the entire semester, 
If you have some type of medical issue, you need to get that uh, coordinated through the disability services coordinator. Uh, self-reporting. So you need to self-report yourself if you're getting sick or if you've been around somebody with COVID-19 within the last 14 calendar days, or if you've been tested for COVID-19, even if it's not positive, if you've been instructed to go get a COVID-19 test, then you should do a reporting so they can keep track of that and keep track of what the outcome is, if it's a positive or negative. Uh, so if you've experienced any of the following, fever, cough, shortness of breath, weakness, fatigue, nausea, change in taste or smell, or you've been within six feet longer than 15 minutes with somebody with COVID-19 that's actually tested positive, you need to report yourself. Also, you don't need to come to class if you have any of those. And you need to Zoom. And then uh, once you report, they'll figure out if you actually need to go get a COVID-19 test or if you just got seasonal allergies or what's going on with that. And then they'll let you know if you can come back to the, to the classroom. So here's quarantining. Um, so they've been put into quarantine or isolation due to exposure. That means you're still supposed to maintain a good standing in the course. So I will definitely zoom any any coursework. You can use remote PC to, to jump in. So unless that you're with a high fever and, and just can't get up and do any schoolwork. You should be able to maintain um, maintain your class and stuff. I mean, if you get put on a ventilator and you're in the hospital, we're not going to expect you to be able to keep up with with assignments on the on the due dates. But try to have somebody, hopefully your family and stuff, knows the, how to contact us if you are put in the hospital or something like that. Let's hope everybody's doesn't get it or asymptomatic and have no problems. Um, Zoom etiquette. Be addressed appropriately. Careful with what's uh, around you that might be picked up on the webcam. We don't want to see you sitting on the toilet. Um, or who knows what else that might be sitting around your room. Uh, just be careful on it needs to be, you know, like a professional. If you're doing this from work, some stuff you might need to pay attention to. The, a lot of times it'll be whiteboards with maybe passwords on them or network designs and stuff. Be real careful if you're at work, what's, what's being shown in the background. Try to remain mute, muted until you speak so you don't get background noises. Dogs barking, cats meowing, stuff like that. And when you join up, you see everybody is, use their first name and last name. And if you have a, have a nickname that you go by, go ahead and put that out in parentheses. So if you're Tommy Smith and everybody calls you Tom, and then when you join the Zoom meeting, you come in as, as Tommy, and then in parentheses, you put Tom in there, and then add Smith as the last name. Yep, we got Trey. Perfect. Uh, also something with Zoom, you can hold space bar to use as a push to talk. So you don't always have to click unmute every time. That's cool. That's a good tip. I think I heard that once, but I've already forgotten it, so. Reminders are never bad. They're always good. Exactly. I, I completely forgot about the push to talk, and I remember that now. Uh, mostly because I just sit here and spew boring, monotone voice stuff and put everybody to sleep, and y'all are the ones that have to do the space bar to talk, so that's why I forgot about it. Okay, remote instruction. Thanksgiving break has been shortened to Thursday, Thanksgiving day through Sunday. Uh, remote instruction begins the Saturday before Thanksgiving break. So that week you would not come into, come into the university, including the final. You're gonna be doing your final via Zoom. We'll just do a session like this and I will tell you the password you'll log into test out and you'll do that cert exam 
just like you did for your hardware software cert exam and test out. Um, so the Monday and Wednesday of Thanksgiving break, we've been kind of advised that we don't actually have to hold the Zoom meeting those two days for attendance. And I'm going to agree since it was on the calendar, but we're starting a week late. That's why they yank those days back. We'll just have an assignment that'll be due the following Monday. And when you turn into assignment the following Monday, that'll count for your attendance on the 25th and the 23rd of November. I'll try to remind you when we get closer to that. So yeah, my final is going to be Zoom. It's not going to cost you anything. Extra other classes may use something called Proctorio. Five dollars per exam. You'll need a credit card to, to activate it. So if you're taking an English exam, a math exam, they will probably use the Proctorio. Uh, it requires a webcam. That's why I said it'd be good to get a webcam in case you have one of those classes required a Proctorio final. A microphone, you need a desktop or laptop computer. A phone or tablet doesn't work. And it has to have Google Chrome installed. So if anybody has that, that's your requirements. And you'll probably get a lot more detail if a faculty member is going to give that sort of exam. So mine's all via Zoom to avoid the cost and complexity of setting that up. Plus ours is in test out, I don't know what proctorial would do for that. Any questions over the syllabus or over that PowerPoint? Uh, no, but I was just, I just messaged uh, Chase because he was always talking about his, his uh, picture being flipped upside down. And I was just trying to tell him to go into video settings. It's and not then upside uh, down. No. on that preview, my there's camera, a rotate. My camera just always turns off without me hitting it. Oh, okay. All right. Well. Yeah, no, it's not upside down. I did that. This camera. Oh, okay. All right. Never mind then. Okay. Let's see. What else we got going on? Um, so most of you have seen this other one that I show. Uh, I'll show this one. Let's see. Oh, there's somebody new missing. That's sad. That one passed away. I guess y'all heard about that one on the news. I don't listen to the news because they're full of lies. Yeah, if I get a phone call or something like that and I run out, that's... Uh, I say, and they're um, trying to find my children. So if anybody's now just viewing this or not shared, if you got Facebook, it looks like they may have like Instagram, some other stuff, share it on social media. Um, they're trying to get, get it to where they can update and add more uh, like the wife's, the mom's picture on here and stuff. So. Where, where were they last seen? Uh, Keelan, Missouri, the Boot Hill of Missouri. The older kids um, knew or had a bunch of friends in Rosebud High School. So if you know anybody that's in Rosebud High School or just recently graduated Rosebud High School, they may know where the older Goodman kids are. Um, I kind of figure social media, the older two are, are still being out there. So got to find them and get them back into a stable, safe environment. But yeah, I'll um, got to get those kids back. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Most definitely. And there's been so many people. It's just basically, it's not my problem. So, great stuff. Um,
So this is the PM class. It looks like I got a lot of people in this. Is everybody in here? Got Jared, you're in here. Crane, I added most of you in here. This the other class had a few people I couldn't find. But I think I don't know if I'm in here or not. Yep. Okay. All right. Well, I just, I don't think, I haven't paid for security yet, so I wasn't 100% sure that I would be actually on this list or not. Yeah, nobody's paid for it. You can enroll in the class. If for some reason you're not on here, so we've got Matthew, Chase, Jeremiah, Andrew, Brian, Haley, Roger, Haley, Robert, I think, I think everybody's on there. I think I found you all. And if you don't see your name, name last name at asub.edu. Yeah, if you don't see your name on the list, then you need to, to log in to test out and join my stupid light went off. There we go. That probably looks weird. But I think everybody's in there. We got we got twelve. So I believe that's everybody. Eleven. I see eleven. Eleven people. Who's not here yet? We didn't log in. So Sean, Sean Crane. That's who didn't log in. Okay. So this is this is like we we show up Wednesday for this class, correct? Yes. Yeah. Okay. He was here this morning and later. I don't know where he is. Uh, maybe internet issues or who knows. Maybe he'll send an email or something or maybe he forgot he had a one o'clock class. Or maybe he's like, he's going to go over that PowerPoint again and I don't care. No. Um, I understand that. So has everybody done the uh, syllabus quiz yet? Yes. Si, senor. Okay, well, if you haven't, for those that may not have clicked, I'm actually going to take about a four minute break right now. And I'll be right back just in case somebody's needing to finish that syllabus quiz. And there was a couple of people in the first class that didn't finish the syllabus quiz. So make sure you click on there. It's not very complicated. It's only one possible answer on it, too. You can't get it wrong. But I'll be back in about four minutes or less. Anybody want to start a podcast? Negative. You guys want to hear me sing? So that was a, a pretty short four minutes, I think. Pretty quick, yeah. So let's see here. So Andrew Talon, you've got a weird picture on your screen. I've already heard some complaints about it. So what do you mean? This is my room. No, the Trump. That's not Trump. The Trump head with, with whatever. It's your profile picture for Zoom. Yeah. 
Oh, you're talking about Donald Cheeto. Oh, yeah. I thought I changed that. I guess it didn't fully change. I changed that like last year. Mm, yeah, see if we can modify that to either no picture or something that your other faculty want, like professionalism and no weird pictures. I mean, there's nothing obscene about it, but they don't like silly pictures. You don't yeah. like my Donald Cheeto? <laughs> It could offend somebody. So. Well, is me being uh, is is a picture of me when I was like five or six years old? Is is that acceptable? Is that professional or? Mm -hmm. mm. Probably like a recent like school picture, you know, something like that you would see in a yearbook picture would be professional if you want to put your face on there. You could have somebody else take a picture, you know, as long as it looks similar to what a, a yearbook photo would look like. Okay. Um, but my, so, I don't know if you can see my face or not. It's just my face, it's no background. Right. That's basically what we're, we yes. don't, um, don't want to see anything political, cartoony, or you know, just picture of you is fine. Um, so I guess I'm just kind of wondering, though, if uh, if it's acceptable for me to have no profile picture. Yes. Then I don't I don't see how that would be considered professional. Yeah, no profile picture would be because then it comes up, and it just shows your initials on our screen. Or your name. Yeah. But actually, somebody could be politically upset about that. So that's why we're talking about professionalism is religion. And you don't talk about religion and politics, right? <laughs> right. I, well, I, I do it to, to spike some humor into it. I, you know, I, I honestly, I, I've kind of learned to just not really like, I, and this, this is just coming from her, her, a, a personal view like i just yeah there's platforms it, do that on like your face your personal facebook stuff like that cool but when you're jumping into a classroom or and you're jumping in like maybe you, if you had a zoom meeting with the company and you forgot that was stuck in as your zoom profile picture that probably wouldn't be a good thing so we're trying to prep, right. prep you for you know uh, hey you need a job interview tomorrow or somebody wanting a six-figure salary you might be like holy crap you don't want something like that on there yeah, I understand that. So uh, I, just, I just have this whole, I don't care if like I hurt you or offend you. I kind of have that kind of like a feeling about everything. But yeah, I'll definitely change that. Yeah. We're trying to prep you for career. You know, it's completely different from you know, coming out of K through 12. And, and there's a difference when from your buddies and people on Facebook than there is a career path. There's, you got to have a different a different uh, demeanor, I should say. Yeah, I, I, I get that. Yeah, I, I understand that. Yeah, I, I completely just like, I don't know. I could have sworn I changed everything and I thought it was going to change the profile picture, but I guess it didn't. So, yeah, I don't mind changing it. Um, yeah, but I'd like for everyone to call me Spider-Man now. Uh, it's, I'm, I'm Spider-Man, so. All righty then. <laughs> I changed. <laughs> I put in parentheses Spider Man. So, Spider Pig from, from The Simpsons, right? Yep. Okay. Um, so, of course. At, at first, I thought you were talking about my Joker picture back here. Now, I can't see you. I can just see my screen that I'm sharing, and I've just got a chat list over here, and I see your, your Trump uh -oh. cheat. I wonder if I can actually, oh, I can edit my profile picture. Okay, cool. Change the picture. All right. So you know the purchase course material or get with, uh, if you have charged against financial aid, you get with uh, the bookstore or textbook corner. And nothing is tested out as due until next week on Friday.
I'm gonna stop sharing for a second. Oh my goodness gracious. Okay. So what am I covered in the last class? It's kind of two security classes back to back. Trying to think of what I covered in the last last class and what I covered in this one. Um, so we've already got to make sure that you're all in the test out, but you've got to purchase it. Uh, seating charts. That's what I've not done yet, seating charts. I need to share my whiteboard. And I need my pen. And this is the Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 1 p.m. Security class. Okay. Let's draw a little, little desk. We got three desks along this wall. That's the, uh oh. That's the door. I'm an artist. We know. I'll take the same spot that I, that I have my first class. Well, that's a little too easy. big. Um, oh well. I took the very first yeah. computer. Yeah, if you've got a, preferably you sit at the same seat in the morning class as the afternoon class. That way your germs are contained to one spot, which you should. So what do we have? We got computer four, nine. 14. So this will be for the Wednesday people. Um, do you know what day you're supposed to come in? Not at all. Um, let me see. Wednesday, I think. I think I come in on, uh, uh, coming on Wednesday. Yeah, I come in on Wednesday, so. I think I'm also Wednesday. Oh boy. Okay, so we kind of set it up about like that. And let's see if I've got, if I can see who's supposed to come in on Friday. One o'clock class on Fridays. Supposed to be Matthew York, Haley Smith, and Robert Kirk are supposed to be the Friday people. So let me go take care of the Wednesday people first. Okay, Jared. I see it was 11 in the morning. Okay. Yep. Robert, are you over there listening to music? Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I'm jamming out, there. okay? I saw him over there dancing, and I'm like, what? That's not. <laughs> Don't judge me. I'm not judging, man. I promise. I'm not judging. Okay, Sean Crane's not here, but he was on number four, so. <laughs> he vibing. <laughs> Sean was number four. Um, Joshua Main. We'll assign you the number 18.
that's where you were on the other one. Let's see. Haley was on number 13. Haley O'Donnell. McGuire, you were was McGuire anywhere? Or is this your first class with me? Uh, yeah, it's my first class. Okay, uh, so I'm going to skip you for now and make sure I don't throw you in somebody else's seat. Let's see, Brian. Brian from number six. And then Kaylon, you're up at number one. Jeremiah Williams. It doesn't really matter to me. Yeah, and then you weren't in an earlier class, were you? Yes, you were. Yeah, it was. Yeah, you were 16. Did you remember that? Yeah. Yeah. So I guess we'll draw you in on 16. Um, I would just copy and paste it. And Chase. What? Hey, this is your first Zoom class with me, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, let's go back to, so Chase, what number do you want? What computer? Oh, okay. Pick one, you got nine, 14, eight, or three? Uh, I, I hope three, eight, I don't know. Okay, put you under three. There. Um, so it was McGuire. We needed to pick one. Uh, don't matter to me. You want number? Well, just pick a number. You got three of them. All right, I'll just take uh, fourteen. You could have just rolled a dice and whatever number it was. That's the number you have. I wish I had a dice, my man. Ask Siri to say, hey, Siri, roll a dice. She'll tell you a number. Me and Siri, aren't on, me and Siri aren't on speaking terms right now. She cheated on me with a, uh, Alexa, so. <laughs> hey, Mr. Goodman. Yes. Can I change to eight? Who is that? I can't see you talking. It's Chase. No, you gotta be up. Oh, come on. Um, so that's every. He wants to be able to see if you're actually there or not, and if you're in there late. Okay, that's all mine. Let me go look at the other on Friday. Friday's full. Let's see what we can do with them.
come in on Friday. Let's Robert Kirk, you're Is this your first class with me, or are you in another class? Uh, this is my first one with you. Okay, so we'll put you, since you're coming in on Friday, um, I'd love if I could have the seat that I always choose number one. Not on my turf, boy. Wait, it's okay. Well, there. you're Wednesday and I'm Friday, so. I'm going to sit you at spot number five because we're not supposed to be here on Friday. John Crane, I guess. Let me see. Yeah. Um, yeah, so you'll be coming in on Friday, so you're going to sit there on Friday. The Reds are, are Wednesday seats. All right, that works out. Or do you want, or do you want the two spot? Uh, it doesn't matter. I'm fine with that. You can be either one. If you remember the room, which one do you think you see the board better at? Uh, let's do two then, because that's just one seat over from where I normally sit. Yep. I think I can see the screen better at eight. So. <laughs> Friday, Robert, Kirk, um, Haley Smith. You want number nine or eight? I'll do nine. Okay, I'll do Matthew York. Are you here, Matthew? Yeah. So I'll put you at number eight. Okay, that's where I was at in the morning anyways. On Friday, yep, that's good. Cool. Wait, was Haley on another one somewhere? In a different class? What? Me, Haley, or the other Haley? I was at 14 in the first class. Mm. Let's see, Roger, this was your only one, right? Wait, what is this? Yeah. Is this for like the uh, the remote PC stuff? Yeah, the other days you're going to do remote PC. So like, do I need from whenever I was in your class? Yeah, from land? A little bit. Okay, Roger McGuire, you're going to be on number nine. All right, sounds good. And then Haley, you're going to stay at 14. Sounds fine to me. It's less confusing. That way. It's already confusing enough. Uh, okay, so we got you in there. I don't know if I talk too much about the uh, the contact tracing and stuff. For ASU Jonesboro has a medical. Uh, departments and they're going to be doing the contact tracing. That's why we're keeping track of all of these 
and we're having our self-reporting and stuff, that goes to the Jonesboro. They don't trust the speed of the state government. So, I mean, we're going As we shouldn't. But, um, but they, they trust that their medical students and doctors that they are running in-house to do a better job. So that's why we're keep, keeping all of these. So if somebody like, you know, number six gets deathly ill, we might have to alert, you know, the people that were sitting so many feet around them that uh, they might have to be tested too or something. Uh, there's supposed to be an emergency clinic up at Walmart. I know the health department over by the fire department here in BB, they'll give COVID-19 testing if need be. And I think it's free. And you need to let them know if you do need a COVID-19 test that you're a university student because you get a priority to get the test results back faster because you are in a group of, or a possible group of people affecting, same thing if you're K through 12, any student, college or K through 12 student gets priority on the testing pool. Somebody said the one by Walmart, I think those same day results. Okay, so everybody jotted down what seat you're supposed to be in. I do have it on sheets of paper. If I can read my chicken scratches by Wednesday and Friday. I uh, would never have a Q-tip shoved up a nose for the test. Like I just don't go that way. So I'd never have a Q-tip getting touching my brain. So that's just me. Where did that come from? Well, I, I just, you know, you're, you're, you know, we're talking about how we're getting people, like people are testing and that they'd have the same test the same day they'd get the answer or, oh. you know, they're, so I was just saying that I, I'm never going to test because I don't want a Q-tip shoved up my nose. Like not very pleasant from what I've heard. Exactly why I'm not going to test it. Like I'm just saying, I'd rather have a Q-tip up my nose than my parents die because I'm being a dummy. Yeah, you got to watch out for family. Uh, it's not going to happen, but. Okay, I'll tell your dad that. Okay. <laughs> what, that I don't want a Q-tip shoved up, uh, shove up my nose? No. I already, he already knows. It's not that bad, honestly. It doesn't hurt. It depends on who does it. Yeah, I mean. Oh, yeah, Baptist some people go for brains. Yeah. yeah, well, the one in Baptist up in uh, North Little Rock, they didn't do it that bad. They didn't hurt. Spewing blood out your nose, and then they don't think they did a good job. Why? It's just insane. Okay, so we've got everybody in. Just take a spit sample. Just test me. Just test my spit. Like, I'm going to shout on my nose. So I'm going to check out a remote PC. So on on Wednesday, you three that are supposed to be coming on on Friday, you'll be zooming in and you'll be a remote PC. Use your remote PC to access your computer. And we're going to try to install uh, Kali Linux and Windows 10 on Wednesday and Friday. If you're doing a remote PC, you may want to do the Windows install instead of the Kali install because Kali only really operates good if you're in person. Uh, Windows operates okay with Hyper-V if you're a remote. So those that come in on on um, Wednesday will probably do Kali installer and then the if you're remote PCing in you'll just do the Windows 10 install. And I'm going to check remote PC and make sure everybody has a an account. Because we got we got accounts deactivated over the summer and some of you may not have had remote PC in the past. I'm pretty sure Jared and Sean have both had it activated. Let me go through each one of these. So Jared, Britton, Sean. I don't believe I've ever used it, so. Let me check. Robert Kirk, yep, you don't think so. I'm going to create you an account. So, 
and it'll go to your ASUB student email. It'll be from remote PC. And you'll have to give them your phone number so you can set up the two factor authentication. I'm sending the invites now. So that should come into your ASUB email. Mr. Kirk. I haven't gotten anything yet. I've already got mine. Let me quickly double check. Well, I haven't got down to you, Taylor, yet. And you should already have been in there from last time. I think. It's, I'll double check. Uh, let's see. I don't know, honestly. Dr. Main's activated. Haley O'Donnell, I think. He's still activated. McGuire. Yep, you've got remote PC. Haley Smith is in there. For sure, Brian. Yep. Andrew, yes, your account's active. So you won't get an email, just Robert never had one before. That's why you had to get an invite. And Jeremiah, I think we made sure yours was activated. Yep, yours is activated. Chase. Do what? I'm looking for your account now. Um, get over there. There it is. Okay, your remote PC account you used in the spring is reactivated. All right, thank you. And I'm pretty sure Matthew York. You did yours earlier. Yep, I'll see you as an active user. Okay, I've looked through all of the the whole roster and everybody now has remote PC. If you've not logged into remote PC, you may want to go ahead and test that out before Wednesday or Friday comes along here. So everybody knows who's coming in on Wednesday, right? Everyone except for three of us. Yep. And y'all be coming in on Friday. I'm going to try to do probably the wireless hacking lab um, next week on Wednesday and Friday. I'll probably, uh, I should be here for this class. For you, those that are in my eight o'clock class, I've got a doctor's appointment next Monday. You need to remind me to tell everybody on Wednesday about that doctor's appointment. So, hey, don't forget to remind the eight o'clock class for next Monday that you're, you got a doctor's appointment. So you're basically, that's when you should have, well, that's land too. You sure they have it, but you should, that's, uh, work on test out module eight for that Monday. Um, I may have to do some type of attendance quiz or something just so I can count the, that you are here. Jeremiah wants to know what day he comes in. That's what day did Jeremiah come in? I then forgot. Wednesday. Tell him Saturday. Just tell him Saturday. Because it was only me, Haley Smith and uh Matt York. Okay. Yeah. So if you aren't those three people, you're coming in on Wednesday. So like I said, we're um, next week, Wednesday and Friday, and it may bleed over into the third week. And then I've got uh, five wireless cards that have the hardware in them that you can hack with. You have to buy a special wireless cards that you can, you can hack uh, Wi-Fi with. Not all of them have that capability. They cut the circuitry in them, but you can still order some cool hacking wireless cards, and that's what we will do. We're basically, basically normally do that around November time, but because we don't know, there's hedging bets that they may shut us down within two weeks. I want to try to do the most coolest thing, and the one that we have to have DVDs for and a specialized network adapter score. I'm wanting to do that part at the very beginning. 
those our certified ethical hacking stuff is not going to flow with the chapters that we're doing in in test out we'll just do some hacking and like really cool um, and everybody loves to break the wi-fi password and then they're like i got neighbors and and i was like and it's illegal <laughs> Unless your neighbor is like a relative and then you get a signed permission from your brother that you can hack his Wi-Fi, I wouldn't do it. You can't be put in jail. And there's some... That way I can crack the uh, BB High School's internet and figure out... That, that would not be the wise thing to do. I'm just messing. I mean, people figure it out all the time. Like every year, somebody will figure out what the password is, but it's never me. Yeah. Well, I'll show you how to... We'll, we'll show you how that maybe they figured it out probably just by word of mouth and seeing a teacher or somebody's got some type of backside knowledge but we'll look at the um how people can break in to the D wpa anyway personal not the enterprise class that uses certificates those are pretty difficult but the i thought there was an app on the android that you could like if you had a rooted phone i thought there was an app you could download and it would like tell tell you like uh passwords for wi-fi it probably can air crack we're going to use a program called air crack there are some other tools or graphical but i want to drop to the command line and run all the command line tools it's, that way if you do use a simple graphical one you you understand what's going on in the background lots of new exploits that hackers uh, run they write them in script files and stuff so they're not using the full graphics tool to do it with and sometimes the command line will let you customize it to your network to see if, if you're vulnerable or not. Sometimes you have some quirky stuff that graphics might not provide. But that's basically, you know, what what do people get access to? We're not going to go with the really smart people that develop the, the byte code and stuff and develop new cracks and stuff. We're going to look at things that are in Kali Linux that come with it that your middle average hacker has access to and social engineering to break into the network. But it is, you can, one security firm, a couple of guys got arrested and thrown in jail. The courthouse paid them to do penetration testing. Well, they took the job seriously. They tried to do physical penetration testing like on Saturday and get into the system and it set off an alarm. They got arrested and then they, you know, were shown off or we were paid to do this. And of course, the cops aren't notified. They, you know, the cops are going to look at a piece of paper and like, well, we don't know who generated this piece of paper and we could just be lying. So they ended up in jail for a few days before they got it all sorted out. They were actually supposed to do that. I just don't want anybody to get in trouble and do some, some warnings if you can't just go get an IT job and decide, oh, I'm going to pin test my company's network you could get thrown in jail even though you work there so you got to be real careful on stuff so are you going to tell us how to crack wi-fi passwords along with not filling and they're not leaving any traces of us doing it it'd be quite difficult to be able to see that you broke in especially if you're mobile on stuff and especially if you booted up off the of cali read only dvd it'd be pretty hard to trace it back to you know who did it because you're really, I mean, they, they would see MAC addresses. MAC addresses are going to be sent. But if it's not a built-in, if it's an external card, which it might have to be, might have to be a special dongle that, that uh, has the cracking stuff. But that would be cool. And I think the one card's like, I didn't see, of course, this COVID stuff has caused some problems. The last time I looked it up, they didn't have any in stock. I don't know if they stopped manufacturing it or, or what's going on, but anytime you buy a Wi-Fi card, you just basically need to search uh, Wi-Fi cards that, that work with Kali, Linux, and Aircrack and look at the list of them. And I've only got five. I need to order some more. So 
we will see. Like I said, it may take up to three or four different class periods to, for everybody to crack Wi-Fi. We'll see how that how fast we can get it done and swapping stuff around. And especially with us not learning everything that we normally would know prior. So Yeah. Yep, yep. What else have I left out? I had to create a lot more remote PC accounts in the last class. So we went over to test out. You need to buy it. Um, the end of third class, it's kind of hard to remember what all I've covered and what I hadn't covered. Have I missed anything? <laughs> I don't think so. I don't know what you had planned for this class. Well, I've been kind of similar to the first class, just an intro and syllabus and test out. <laughs> COVID, PDFs and testing and um, we got the seating chart done. We got the remote PC done. So I have a YouTube channel too that, you know, important classes I'll upload. I don't know if I'll upload both classes, like this class and the 10 o'clock class, since we'll be covering similar stuff. I may only upload the 10 o'clock class lecture. So if you happen to miss it or something, you may go back and look and see what the 10 o'clock class did. I think so. Have you seen my my YouTube? Some of you subscribe to it. I said it's really great if you want to go to sleep at night time. You just listen, <laughs> and you'll fall right to sleep every single time. If you sub, if we sub to you, will you sub to us? Sub for sub. Uh, yeah, sub for sub. Help, help, help each other out. Had students to run adult sites and stuff like that. I'm like, yeah, no, I'm not going to subscribe to your sites. You got people trying to make you do ads? The what? Wait, what did you say about the adult sites? What? <laughs> I joined in a little late. I was kind of like oh looking at my door. Sorry. <laughs> no, I meant like I, I didn't know if people were trying to like hit him with ads. I don't know. Just ignore it. <laughs> No, I'm not trying to get any type of ad or anything. Oh. All right, that's what I thought you were saying. Hey, don't. Hey, just stop worrying about your <laughs> lights, Mr. Goodman. There we go. I can still you see you, man. Go without them. Back on. I don't like to see the dark. I'm scared of the dark. Yeah, yeah me too. It's okay. That reminds me of the scene in SpongeBob when SpongeBob threw out the trash can. He just like stormed off running into the trash can and then turned around and ran all the way back inside. Okay, so anyways. Only SpongeBob fans will know that. Hold on, I'm answering the chat. I misspelled. Whatever. They'll understand what to do. Close enough at least. Okay, so um Man, we're way faster than the other class, but normally afternoon class is faster. We get stuff done. I don't know. Y'all are just smarter people, probably. Yeah, so yeah. I'm Goodman said it, it's confirmed. So I'm not smart. Yeah, it's the truth. We jump through this here. Maybe it's just we got got the energy from from after lunch or something, I don't know. So smart, you can just give me a hundred, all right? Well, you get a hundred today for, well, not really, it's it's just an attendance for doing that quiz. Just, uh, it still counts for the entire semester. Yeah, but I guess it goes into your, uh, I haven't checked to see if it adds into your grade or not, it's a hundred percent quiz. One out of one. Not going to mess with the with the overall average too much. One point, but you might as well start off with a hundred percent in the semester. 
then what are you working for? If you always have a hundred in there, then you got nothing to work up to. But if you have a 20, you can work your way up to becoming a higher, got a a higher grade. Yeah. I'm sorry. That's not how that works. Yeah. <laughs> that's just completely wrong. Mainly <laughs> a joke. So, yeah, I'm probably going to upload my other classes to YouTube. I probably want to upload this one to YouTube. Well, you could always upload this one because it's shorter. That's a good one. True, true. Because odds are. I may actually do that. I see some magnificent, magnificent minds in here, and Andrew. Wait, wait, you're recording this whole thing. Hey, I'm a. I, <laughs> I'm a magnificent mind. You're flashed up on screen, so you're gonna be out on public to YouTube. And yeah, I'd rather um like cut out the part where I said anything about the ads, if possible. <laughs> no, I think we need. To He's afraid he's gonna, he's gonna get demonetized. <laughs> uh, exactly, exactly. Just cut it out. <laughs> I can't cut it. It's just like records the whole thing, and I'm not going to spend that much time editing. Stuff. All right, you can send it to me, and I'll, I'll just edit it real quick. They won't know who you are. There's only a few. Yeah, people. you're right. My name don't pop up. Yeah, your name totally doesn't just throw <laughs> off Chase. No. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they won't know that it's it's what who's Chase Chase Withers it is in the world. There's probably fifty thousand of you. Yeah, except for my face popped up like earlier. Okay, so That's what fine. are the odds of somebody in another world or a different state to come crawling into your YouTube channel and watching your videos that have no intention of actually teaching them anything and for them to just sit there and watch the full video? They right? never the just popped up on random slow. YouTube videos because I've, I've always just watched some random things. And then correlate it over to this one. I don't. Yeah, but I mean, I get bored at whenever I'm laying in bed. I just watch some random things. Yeah. <laughs> It uh, takes you to some uh, weird places, man. I'm telling you. Okay, well, um, I think that's. I think we did a great first day. Buy your test out stuff, and I'll see most of you on Wednesday and the rest of you on Friday. And well, I'll I'll see the, I'll see everybody each day, either Zoom or, or in person. All right, sounds good. Okay. All right. Bye. Bye. So. What is the deadline to buying the test out? Is there a deadline for it? Um, I think the first chapter is probably due next Friday, maybe. You'd have to look um, like see when it's the first one's due. So there's no like temporary codes, is there while I'm waiting for like uh my uh hell grant? You can probably get on the chat with them and ask for a temporary like like two week code or something for the Pell Grants. Normally the normally you can just do as long as it's approved, you can just charge against the bookstore. Also there's what textbook corner or whatever there right there beside the school. Yeah. They weren't weren't those well. more expensive though for test out the test out corner? Mm -hmm. I'd call them both and compare the prices between the bookstore and textbook corner and and they both will allow you to charge it against your financial aid. So more than likely it is more right. expensive. You don't have to wait. If you got financial aid, you don't have to wait. You can just sell the charge against your financial aid. All right, sounds good. So, all right. Any more questions before I end it? Uh, this is a question not pertaining to this class, but virtualization meets in person, right? Yep. Cool. In person every day until we hit November or they cut us out early. I hope not. But so what kind of concludes if they're going to cut us out, or like shut down the entire school, just the cases going up or people not doing what they're told? Uh, governor. Cases most likely. If the governor sees a spike in all the cases, he'll probably shut them down. Yeah, it's, it's going to be up to him. He's the only one that's really got bad authority. So odds are we won't be here for long, but. That is true. Most likely. I think the biggest pull is two weeks. We get this week next week, and then they're going to throw us all online. But. Yeah, well, we'll see, because everybody just started today, so. So how's yeah. that going to do with, like, like my dad, how he has to have, like, his whole, like, teaching is based on hands-on stuff. So how how would that work? Um, 
We hope they could still come in. That's what the hope is. They're just might have to do like a whole lot more precautions. Yeah, they're trying to they may have to wear face shields and a mask every day to come into class or something like that. I think they actually are. Some of the labs and they have to get together. I think I think your dad and the students are probably all gonna be wearing face shields and a mask. So. Let's put some Tyvek suits on or something. Going on. Everybody just needs to take a night, wash themselves with some Lysol, and we'll be all fine. Just regular mm -hmm. kill germs. I'm not sure that's how that works. <laughs> but... All right, I'll see you Wednesday. Okay. And you have to take a shot of Germax every day. Not a whiskey. That will decrease the spread. Guarantee it. And will increase death rate of just from Point people taking shots of Germax. 0.2%. It's only going to increase the death, the death rate to 2.2%. We'll kill off all the people from shots of Lysol, and that way they can't be killed from COVID-19 by accident. <laughs> yeah. Survival of the fittest. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> or survival of the liars, whichever one you want to call it. Yeah. But apparently in Northwest Arkansas, it's pretty bad. It's a lot worse than we've experienced here. I just Hope it don't get that bad down here. Talking to people that's been up there, it's quite a bit more scary than than they are down this way. You you're saying down though, but Little Rock is north or is south of us though. No, I'm talking about from northwest Arkansas down. Little Rock is down. Uh oh, I, I could have sworn you just said something about Little Rock. I said it's not as bad as it is over in Fort Smith and Russellville, Fayetteville area. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, it's pretty bad up there. Yeah, now I got some buddies that I'm worried about who are going to school up there, so. Yeah. It does seem that's in the certain populations up that way. Certain ethnic groups are, are being hit harder up there. But it's, it's spreading to, I mean, it's not just picking, don't just pick somebody, but. Okay, well, I'm going to end the session. All right, good luck. This will be a little bit shorter of a YouTube video.